to me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Dylan and Brian take to to Brian and Dylan take on the world. I th I think that's what this is called now. Yes, uh, I am. It's been Dylan. a minute, and I am Brian Dylan. How are you? As I'm good. As you can see, it's been about a year, and, and Brian still cuts me off before <laughs> I'm I'm done talking. Um, Brian, my friend, it's been good to talk to you. We have we we have not spoken or texted a word in over. No, a year. you know that's uh, from the beginning. That's what we said we wanted to do. It's like. Our friendship very strong. We started podcasts. Our friendship will remain strong only on the podcast. We have no contact outside of it anymore. So I'm very happy and, to be uh, back. In the tabloids, they were saying uh, there might might be some issues with over there at uh, Brian and Dylan Take on the World, and you know we're we're back and we're here to say there's no it's, issues. We're we're uh, we're potting again, baby. This is what I call potting. Hey, that I mean, if I was gonna call something potting, it would be this. For sure. So, Dylan, this is like season two, right? We're, we're episode 14 of the show. We last talked about Solo, a Star Wars story. Everyone hated us sure for liking that movie, and we had to go into hiding for almost a year. Sure did. But we think most of those people have forgotten by now, so we're back. Most people have, most people have unsubscribed, yes. so we're, we're back, baby. <laughs> bigger, back in a bigger than ever, absolutely. So, Dylan, what are we talking about in the, our return to the podcasting game. I got to be honest, the thing that, that spurred all this was was the, the big news that came mm -hmm. out today. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, th I think we all know what we're talking about. We're, this is what we're all here for. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, new so the new Sonic uh, movie trailer mm -hmm. dropped, and it, it was it was so startling right. that, that we just we had to get on the pod. Yeah, I mean, it. it's about time that Sonic gets his due. Um, Mario already had a masterpiece of a film back in the day and now sonic is here to blow detective pikachu out of the water let me just say it's a hundred percent positive reactions across the board right now e yes. everyone so wants now it. we're 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 just gonna go into about an hour and a half long um about the history and the lore of sonic and uh, I, I you know i really appreciate everyone coming here and i am going to talk like this like we're on npr radio and we're going to discuss sonic for the next hour <laughs> well we start off with uh, the book console wars um yeah very, very good book everyone should read it but no of course dylan what are we really talking about well we're talking about how it looks like sonic gives like foot jobs with those cab oh, muscles yeah he does i don't know if you saw those oh i uh, how could you miss him come on baby we're talking avengers <laughs> endgame the biggest movie to come out in the past like 10 years yeah a movie conspicuously absent of foot jobs Unlike the Sonic yes. movie. So disappointing uh, they, off the bat, they, but I think it recovered nicely. It it does have America's ass Ooh. in it though. So oh, that's, it does. So we're we're switching it up. Hell yeah, Brian. Avengers Endgame. I, I, I'm so glad that we're 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 podding oh, again, baby, because th this is the pod this is the pod movie that's gonna get us going again. Absolutely. And so I think wanna wanna start off with a spoiler free section that I can cut out and put on YouTube and potentially direct people to listen to the longer version of this podcast that we worked so hard on. Sure. Uh, so I'll start. I, I loved it. I, I, I don't know if there's anyone that, that openly mm -hmm. hated it. I mean, though there, I'm sure there oh, there's definitely trolls, someone but... out there who's like, no, nope, not impressed at all. Um, yeah, it, it, it exceeded expectations. I was really, I was really floored with how, how good this mm. was. It was so perfectly done and, and in so many different ways. It was executed so well on a dramatic level, on a comedic level. Uh, the fact that they were at, this is the movie that tied all 22 movies before it together. Mm. And it's, it was just, it was unbelievable. I've seen it twice now. Uh, certain scenes still give me chills the second time right. around. Uh, it's it's three hours long. It doesn't feel like it's three hours. It's uh, dare I say it's m probably my all time favorite superhero movie. It's uh, something has knocked the Dark Knight mm -hmm. off, which I w didn't think could be done. But I, this this well that's, that actually speaks to how good the Dark Knight is. That it took like a culmination of twenty two movies to knock that one movie or that sequel to one other Batman movie off its pedestal. Which I kind of feel like that was. And I wouldn't say the consensus. Mm -hmm best superhero movie ever but it was obviously i, I try to find someone that didn't like the dark right. knight and now try to find me someone who didn't like endgame yeah and i think 
You know, I, I've been trying to think about this a lot because I, I have friends who, like yourself, like I, we're, we're really into, the, we're 100% bought into the Marvel Universe. Where, like, we've seen all the movies, a lot of them multiple times. So this, everything, you know, made sense to us. And then I have other people who, like, are very casual. Like, they'll watch the big ones. But, uh, you know, they didn't understand some of the stuff. And I think if you're one of the people who haven't watched all of the Marvel movies and you're a little on the fence to see this movie, I think it is worth checking out the Marvel movies you missed. But you'll still enjoy this movie, even if you haven't watched it all 22 films i think dylan what do you think about that i mean i'd say you have to see infinity uh, War. yeah the, the other the other big that this movie this movie is made for people that have that have not necessarily seen every movie but have dedicated the time to see most of the right. movies especially most of the recent mm-hmm. ones oh especially so, the last two that came out in between i i've seen some criticisms that it's it's a great movie for people that are fans of the universe but it's 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 a it's an above average movie only for people that are that would be fresh to the movies. But at the same time, like I, I don't really care about the people that are just going to see Endgame as their first Avenger movie. Like welcome welcome to the MCU universe, but uh, this movie isn't really for them. Right. And and clearly, I mean the 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 box office records it's breaking within its first. We're not even a full week in. Uh, clearly shows that most of the people have bought into the mm-hmm. MCU already anyway. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, if I would I would say at least you have to see Infinity War because it's really one big giant mm-hmm. movie. I, I'm really looking forward to when the Blu-ray comes out for for mm-hmm. Endgame that I can basically just and I'm assuming that they're gonna come out with the box set for Infinity right. War. Right, I would Endgame imagine too. slam dunk. Just just sitting back on, on like a, a hot summer day with the AC shut <clears> off, <throat> all the windows shut. Just, just sitting mm-hmm. there, just soaking it up, just watching Infinity War and Endgame back right. to back. That's how uh, some that, would say that's, that's how it's meant to be viewed. That's that's yeah. what I'm here for, man. Oh man, no, I I'm really excited. I think it for our original six Avengers, it really is the end. Like, no spoilers, obviously. They did justice to the original six storylines. I think they brought it all together in a very satisfying way and i think this is i mean you've you've probably seen this movie already it made 1.3 billion dollars right in its opening weekend and and climbing That's yeah so it's fucked up dude first, first off i i do i do want to say I, I hope we take down that that godforsaken avatar record <laughs> it's impossible it's a curse dylan no no movie's gonna uh, beat it those those fucking blue people <laughs> i hate them oh okay well we might have to cut that i don't know well we'll have to check with some more see what he says about <laughs> uh, ever since i gave uh ever since i gave a quiet place a, a 90 me and tomorrow have been on, on a rock yeah it's this, a rock it ground. is tense in the in the hypothetical offices if we can get everything no i, I mean from uh, i'm not i'm not a critic by any means i would say from like a critic standpoint some of the things that really impressed me uh robert downey jr i thought was was so oh, good God, he's great, yeah I mean, and he's he's an outstanding actor, and he's pretty much good at every movie he's been in for the MCU. But this one particularly, his his a- acting performances, I guess you would say, like some seeds. A lot of these guys, they're they're superheroes, so I guess you could say they're not quote unquote acting. Right. Uh, if you know what I mean, like they're not they're not really probably like in a dramatic. It's not type. a Shakespearean role, if you will. No, no, but in the dramatic parts, I thought Robert Downey Jr. like mm-hmm. crushed it. I thought I thought he was unbelievable in this movie. This I think this was probably Iron Man's best mm. movie in the MCU. Yeah, and I think um, this is definitely an Iron Man and Cap movie. If you had to like say like who are the main characters in this, which I think yep. it only makes sense. I mean, Iron Man I, was I, the first, right? I, I'd say I'd say all, all four of the of the big original mm. four got got their dues in right. this movie. Uh, Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America. I mean, they all. I think they all shined in mm-hmm. their own way, for sure. For sure. I, this this movie was was their uh, was their you know their their swan song to the to the original mm-hmm. to the original four. Like this was very very well done, and it was. I mean, you knew uh, when everyone was snapped in, in Infinity War, the, the original Avengers were left for a reason. It's because you know this this movie was was meant for them. Yeah, man, it's like the it's like the end of book one. 
I don't know how many books there's going to be of this Avengers saga, but it took 21 chapters to close out the first part of this one. And I am i couldn't be happier with it as a fan. And I think if you go to see this, you'll agree with us. I would hope if you don't, definitely leave us a comment. We, uh, we would love to talk about it. And yeah, is there anything so, else you want to say uh, before we move on to spoilers? I, I guess only fair to give away in our uh, uh, spoiler-free mm. review. I mean, do you want to do our scores now? Um, I'll say, let's say in spoiler-free, we'll just say see it, you know, rent it, or pass altogether. And that, all right, sorry, spoiler-free. You well, you got you to see it, and then you got to listen to the True. whole podcast, download it on iTunes, maybe leave a rating. I don't know. We're not running a charity here. Yes. Ign- ignore the Sonic foot jobs mm. comment. That was, That's uh, going to be we'll, the title we'll of the that. podcast, actually. We'll cut that. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It was cut, well, so if you, if you listen to the whole podcast, you would know. You'd be in the joke. Yeah, I mean, come on, guys. Go go see Endgame. If you haven't yet, the only excuse you really have is that it's sold out yeah. everywhere. Like, I, I, I had to sit in between a, a two a couple on their first oh, no. date <laughs> super awkward and like just a family just arguing mm. the whole time but you know what it didn't take away from the movie and that was the only seat available mm. in the theater so uh, i that's the only excuse you have is that it's sold out everywhere which is another reason why i've never seen a movie sell out like this everywhere oh like God, it was literally ridiculous. everywhere i look it's sold out which is it, it's nuts even for star wars mm. i've never i haven't seen yeah it. no i i thought about casually obviously mine is go see it guys if you can, because I thought about casually like Saturday evening, like, oh, let me let me see what's available. And instead of like saying like, oh, the show times are blocked out, I clicked on Endgame and my app just said there are no showings available today. Oh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Shazam has a couple. Yeah, do you want to see uh, Shazam? Can I interest you in uh, what's that new ghost movie? I don't know, New Country. Uh, the Curse of La Girona. Sure, yeah. Um, I didn't see that, but yeah, guys, when you can go see it, it's it's a phenomenon. We're probably not going to see something on this level again for quite a long while, unless Avengers does it again, which would be unreal. How much money does Mickey Mouse need, really? Oh God, yeah, yes. Good point. Right. All right, so do you want to? Want to move on to spoilers? Let's do it, baby. We, we, we're going spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> buddy. Oh, buddy. What yeah, a this is one. this is really an incredible experience. Just so I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, the you know, the big mm-hmm. one, uh, our, our, our boy Iron Man Oof. sacrificing himself for the team at the end. Uh, some, some, something. I, I, I think a lot of people either assume it was him mm. or Cap that were gonna go right. in this movie. Uh, yeah, I think Iron Man was probably top of the list for, for everyone. E- e- even for me, I was. Uh, it was. It was, Oh man, it was. It hurt. It hurt me right, right in my plums, buddy. <laughs> no, I mean, I, in the way he went out, I definitely. I thought before I really understood what Infinity War was that Iron Man was one hundred percent gonna die in Infinity War. Um, and then when he gets stabbed on Titan, I was like, yeah, fucking see, I told you by everyone. This is a uh, way, way better. He sacrifices himself to defeat Thanos. Um, he wields the infinity stone still. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. Um, it's going to be really sad to say goodbye to Robert Downey Jr. Cause he's been in so many of these films, but if you got to go, that, that is potentially the best way to go. I, I had always thought that because of the contracts, like like Meta outside right, of right. was talked about a lot. Like, <laughs> whose who's contracts mm-hmm. is up? Who, who could potentially still stay in there? And I think the lot, a lot of the, the thought was either A, Iron Man's going to die in this, or B, you know, he's going to take on more of a mentor mm-hmm. role for the future right. Avengers. Obviously, especially maybe uh, mm-hmm. Spider Man. Uh, but st- just the way he went on this was just, ugh. Oh. So well done, and then Thanos saying that. What did he say? That I am, I am your destiny. I am. I am inevitable. Yeah. And then he said, "I am. I am Iron Man," which is perfect because that's how the first Iron Man mm-hmm. movie ended. I thought it was. Oh man, it gave me <laughs> gave me nerd chills. Oh yeah, I'm even getting chills just thinking about it right now. It was it was perfect, and like that, it goes into what I was saying earlier about how well of an acting performance he mm-hmm. he, he did. 
because his his like slow painful oh, death yeah like i felt i was like oh god like mm. tony tony come on man. yeah it was like is he and I, like in the back of your mind you're like no he's he's dead he, he's he's dead but there's that part of you that's like i don't i don't want him to be dead like uh. it was in, in a movie full of a, a, a kind of a series full of a lot of gut, gut-wrenching moments this one you know this one between this and the funeral scene definitely definitely you know kicked you where kicked kicked you where the sun don't mm-hmm. shine like i i was in i was in tears it was uh yeah it was an emotional movie this is this is one of those movies i'd like if you're crying during it, I'm not judging right. you at all because I teared up at yeah, several get, points. Yeah, gets teary eyed um, near the end. Um, what was the biggest moment, like biggest audience reaction for your theater or either of your theaters, I guess? So it's probably between mm. two. Um, for for me, probably the most exciting moment was when uh, Sam Wilson came on the headset <laughs> and said, "Cow yep. on your left." And then, which which called back to uh, Winter Soldier, yeah. when they first met, and then all of a sudden, all the little Doctor Strange portals started mm-hmm. opening up, and all of a sudden you see Black Panther, uh, Shuri, and Akoi, I think I think mm-hmm. is her name come come through that portal, and then you're just like, oh baby, <laughs> and then everyone just starts coming through, and then everyone kind of came through with their own mm-hmm. squad. It was great. All the all the people that were on Titan came flying through. Spider Man. Sp- I think Spider Man's when it really started. Like, I was about to say Spider Man was the biggest reaction for my theater. People fucking love Spider Man, dude. Dude, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah. Spider Man. I I'm one of the, I I like Tobey Maguire mm. a lot. I'm I'm whatever on Andrew yeah. Garfield. Tom Holland. Tom Holland is my. Yeah, Spider-Man, no, I'm I'm 100 sure. percent on board with that as well. But yeah, he when he came in the theater lost it. They're so hyped. Um. Uh, Obviously, the other one is uh, Cap wielding Thor's right. hammer, uh, proving that he was worthy enough. That one was, was obviously that was the other big one too. I think I think in, in both showings I went to, that was probably the one that got the biggest mm-hmm. reaction, for sure. Um, I kind of saw when he was picking up. I, I I think a lot of people, if you watch the other movies, kind of maybe knew yeah. what was coming, but still seeing him wield, wield the hammer was and that awesome. Thor yelling, "I knew it!" Yeah, it was. It, that was great. <laughs> oh man, it, it's just that whole like final twenty minutes is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It, I just, like I I like I have chills just just yeah. thinking about it. It was just so and not only good. like picking it up but like wielding it like a fucking champ. Uh, so the one thing I don't understand, I don't understand like like how everything works. I I, I thought the the whole lightning thing was something only Thor could do. So I guess if you want to get technical. <laughs> Someone, someone who was big mad online in the subs can tell me mm. how I'm an idiot. Uh, we don't have a, uh, a no, right, no. So maybe, <laughs> one maybe day one for day. sure, not uh, today, but one day. So I, I mean, I, I thought that was only a Thor thing, but that, I mean, I'm not gonna mm. nitpick that. That was just so fucking. That was just right. so cool. Oh man! And then probably my favorite thing he did with the hammer is when he threw mm. his shield, and he threw the hammer at the shield, and like the sonic yeah. boom, like knocked Thanos' his feet. Yeah. Awesome. I, uh, I just want to go see the movie right. again right now. We're going to put the podcast on hold. We're going to go see it. We're going to come back. Now, um, I think something the Russos have always done really well is really turn the shield into an offensive weapon for Cap. You know, and I think in the other movies it was just mainly used for blocking. But, you know, he's throwing it into the fucking jets, engines and shit in Civil War. And then yep. now this, like you said, with the hammer causing like a sonic boom. It was... It was awesome, and I think that last battle, I think it's tried to say, like, oh, my eyes are glued to the screen, but I legitimately did not look away. I couldn't. I I had to just, like, take it all in as a giant nerd, just be like, wow, this movie is actually happening in front of me right now. (laughs) One of the other other podcasts I listened to described that battle perfectly. Mm. And they said that it was basically like the battle that happened in Ready Player One with all right, the yeah, yeah. characters, except if you give a shit about <laughs> everyone there, <laughs> which I thought was such a funny way to put it because it's yeah. so true. Because that I, that's it. It does look almost shot for shot when mm-hmm. they all run at each other, exactly like uh, Ready yeah. Player One. Except this one, you have eleven years of investment in all these mm-hmm. characters, and the shot of Captain America just standing there by himself. Facing off against mm-hmm. Thanos and his entire army. Yeah. Oh, gonna, gonna be my phone screensaver for the next. It's very years. reminiscent of um the Battle of the Bastards at that moment. Sure was yeah. great. Yeah, John mm-hmm. Snow. 
Awesome point. And it was just like, yeah. all right, this is like, it led up, you know, his whole character arc. Like, Cap's never going to be the one to back down. Literally until, like, he's straight up dead. And mm-hmm. it was just a perfect moment of that. And, yeah, I, I loved it. So do you, do you want to talk about maybe the most surprising part of the movie for me? That uh, Thanos is dead in the first five minutes. Yeah, I mean, you kind of knew with them going to, I, I think the planet's called okay. the Garden. You kind of knew that either they lost or or something bad was going to mm-hmm. happen there or they just straight up lost him. Um, because, I mean, the movie was only like 10 minutes into yeah, it. Right. But, I mean, I, I did not see Thor just fucking just straight chopping mm-hmm. his head off. Uh, that was that was pretty mm-hmm. shocking. A little like, I mean, he looked like Shrek on the, like, like, it was like the opening <laughs> for Shrek. Oh man! Like Someone's gonna cut. edit that, and then it's gonna cut into somebody once told with, me with, with his head getting cut off. His, like, <laughs> yeah, with like his shirt mm. on. You know, he's picking up some like giant ass pineapples. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't see that coming. And then it was kind of like when you found out that he destroyed the mm. stones. You were kind of like, okay, well, this sets up the movie. But I thought they were gonna put him in like jail. I thought he was gonna like rift <laughs> out of there. I, I honestly, I I didn't. The surprising part to me, not only did he get his head cut off, is that I didn't think that the Thanos we saw in all the trailers was going to be a Thanos no, from the past. No, definitely not. Which I, th- I think that was another pretty pretty big shock to me, too, was uh, was how, uh, and I think you knew that time travel was going to be a big part of this movie, I think, but just how much the time travel altered a lot of the previous history and also the future history of, of the MCU, I, I thought was pretty well done i know a lot of people hate the time travel mm-hmm. cop out uh like see gamora for one uh pretty much everyone's dead that died other than mm-hmm. gamora uh i mean it works though uh but this one yeah uh, thanos getting his head cut off for sure did not see coming yeah and especially it starts off with his arm getting cut off and then like Ooh. captain marvel comes in and just like is a champ you know just like strangles the shit out of him Thanos, Thanos was already in rough yeah. shape from destroying those stones. He did not no. look good. No, he was all burned. And it was like, I think it was really nice because when it happened at the end of Infinity War, he was definitely burned. But you're like, oh, how bad is it? But so he was burned enough so that when you see him in this movie, you don't know right away that something's different. You're just like, oh, maybe, maybe I just didn't see it as much when I watched Infinity War. Maybe they're just focusing on it more. But then when he reveals think, it, you're like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think Banner said in the movie too, it's pretty much all like gamma radiation mm-hmm. or something like that, which is obviously why why Hulk was able to withstand it when Tony right. wasn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, man, that 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 opening. I mean, that whole first like 20 minutes. I I I wasn't sure how Tony was gonna be saved in space. I guess you you kind of assumed. I get, there's a lot of assumptions going into this movie, what was yeah. going to happen with these certain scenes. Uh, so Captain Marvel saving him mm. made sense, but still, even knowing Tony was going to die right there, that whole scene of, of him recording his, his goodbye message to uh, mm. Pepper um, h- h- and him kind of just saying that he's getting ready to just drift yeah. off, you know, that that was still, like, it goes back to Robert Downey Jr. just doing a great job in this movie. Like, I was just, I, I just, I wanted mm. to cry. I was like, oh, God damn it, Iron Man. Like, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying. I really enjoyed the brief scene we had of him and Nebula, like, bonding becoming friends nebula wins something and you know it's like it, it's a big deal but she's you know she's too cool for school to let it show how big of a deal it is um yep. i just i really liked that and i loved how front and center nebula was for this for this adventure um pretty 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 surprising i, I didn't think i didn't think nebula would play as big as a part as she mm-hmm. did either um i mean yeah, I think she's very important in the Infinity Gauntlet saga in the comics, so I, I was kind of mm-hmm. expecting her to be in it, but, uh, you know, I, I, I liked her a lot in this. Um, I guess she's probably, going forward, a permanent member of the Guardians, right? Yep. So that'll be fun. Yep. The, 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 the Asgardians yes, the of the Galaxy. the Asgardians of the Galaxy. Um, but yeah, I, th- I thought it was great. I guess that... Captain Marvel goes to Earth, you know, at the end of her movie, right? We see that scene. Which that's the, oh, so you didn't see Captain Marvel? No, I Marvel. did. I did. So, 
clearly that 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 the end scene of Captain Marvel was not in this movie. Right, no, um, it was not, which was surprising to me. Same. I kind of assumed that because I think I think the end of it's either the end of Thor or the end of Captain America. Like I think the the very ending in that movie, the post credit scene is the opening scene of Avengers. Right. The the first right. Avengers, and that's what I kind of thought this was <laughs> going to be. Um, one of the, the only gripe, the few few gripes I have this movie is, I thought Captain Marvel was going to be this entire movie. <laughs> the definitely the way made she was it seem like and, that was going to be the case. And the fact that she had her own movie right before this, I for sure thought that she was going to be in in like ninety percent right. of this movie, like like all the other Avengers were, all the other surviving mm. Avengers were. I, uh, so did you have a did you not like that or what was your what was your take on it? I, I guess I guess I didn't really like or mm. dislike that, you know what I mean? I I just thought that she was going to be in a lot more of this mm. movie. She really like obviously other than when she comes in through the, the battle scene at the end. And when she kicks Thanos' ass, like I, I like, she really was not in this movie that no, much. No. Like she, she had maybe like, like ten speaking mm. lines, maybe. She's pretty much like, hey, buddy, you know, Earth ain't the only planet that's getting shit kicked out mm. of it right now. Yeah, I mean, so I think I actually I did like it um, because you know I think Captain Marvel is going to be like the front and center of the rest of the MCU. So I guess it was giving our old characters their due. Um, and we got to see her interact with the characters, which was I thought was really cool. You kind of you, you kind of see how, like, OP she is, yeah, too. Yeah, her and I Thor. Mean, right, like, when she, right when she shows up, yeah. like, she just she just starts, she fl- flies through Thanos' mm. ship, destroys that, uh, completely avoids all the cannon fire that, that was just straight up murdering people right. down below her. Didn't affect her at all. Uh, kind of one of the scenes I thought was funny um, was when all all the all the female Avengers were assembling mm-hmm. around her to to kind of to kind of mirror the Infinity War scene with a Koi, Scarlet Witch and and uh, yeah. Black Widow and it was just like every 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 woman that was in this movie yeah. was there and I was kind of like I don't know if she needs your help. <laughs> like, all for all for girl power, but I'm pretty sure Captain Marvel just flew yeah. through like like half this army she just destroyed mm-hmm. a ship within seconds i think she's good just give her the yeah no I, I was actually kind of expecting her to be the one to snap it honestly um because i don't think it would have hurt captain marvel honestly but you know that's okay it you know it's all right i think at the end of the day i liked what she what she was in it i like this idea that like the rest of the mcu is probably not going to be like on earth you know, I think most of our earthly heroes, other than Spider-Man, are going, you know, to not be the focus of what's going forward. And we're going to see a lot of adventures in space on different planets. And Captain Marvel's kind of like the Superman of a lot of planets, not just Earth, you know? Yeah, I, I guess I guess the, the four storylines you have set up is you have Spider-Man, which obviously comes out in mm-hmm. July. Uh, you know you're getting a Black Panther 2, which I'm pretty sure has been, like, already greenlit and for all so we might know, be done like by now yeah filming uh just because everything's so secretive we're gonna have the asgardians of the galaxy which if thor is not in guardians 3 like what was oh, the no, whole he, point he, of that? 100% it's, it ha- yeah. has to be which which i oh man i am all mm-hmm. in on guardians 3 now i can't be more in on a movie than i am on guardians 3 that, that i generally can't wait for that especially with uh with james gunn back yeah. now I um uh, I'll I'll be right there the the, the very first show on mm-hmm. Thursday night. I can't wait. For that. I, I I agree with you one hundred percent. I think uh, I think when we reviewed Infinity War, we talked about it. I was like, just put Thor in the Guardians, like just put just put him with the Guardians. He's awesome in this dynamic. Yeah, and and honestly, in in hindsight, him join him just no longer just want to be part of New Asgard and just join the Guardians it makes mm-hmm. so much sense. Because he's kind of like he's never really all been like all about like that leadership yeah. life like he was kind of forced into his destiny mm. so it makes sense that he's now just with a uh, essentially a, a group of pirates <laughs> and uh yeah so do you want to talk about that we get the five years later and uh everyone's sad and thor is so, the most sad one thing i gotta backtrack yeah. on yeah no so this kind of ties in with this too the thing that most shocked me the most is that we had a fat yeah. thor 
this entire movie. Just a tubby old Thor. Like, oh man, that for 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 us fat guys <laughs> around the world, that re- that really was a big mm-hmm. win for us. I, I, we, Halloween is going to be a lot of Thors <laughs> yes. this year. I can I can guarantee that. I could finally say I have the body. Exactly. Of Thor. Um, I I liked it, and you know what I liked most about it was at the end when he does kind of get his groove back. It, he's still, still fat. fat. He's still fat. Still, he he's not done drinking beer and eating yeah. like Pringles and stuff. He's still fat. Yeah, and I and now, now he's gonna now he's gonna get all like those Zorb nuts mm-hmm. on the ship too that, Drax, that, that Drax yeah. loves to eat. Invisible. <laughs> yeah. So this this is just a big win for for, uh, for us mm. hefty guys. Finally having representation on the big screen. That's not like like John Candy and Uncle Buck. It's just it's right. so even if it took an extremely attractive guy wearing a fat suit to get it. You know, we appreciate. Yeah, yeah, we will we we will not be silenced going forward. Oh man, so that was fun. Um, Meek and Korg uh, being in it was great. Oh, that scene, so good. It. Uh, it, uh, it, Korg is sneaky. One of my favorite MCU. Hey, you can hear me. So him needing Thor is enough for him online, and I love when I love when they walk in. He's like, "Hey, pals, uh, uh, Wi-Fi passwords on the fridge." Or whatever. I know he says Wi-Fi is free for you yeah. to log in. No password, of course. <laughs> it's just his 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 accent is just it's just so good. Yeah, no, I mean, um, Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi. Um, Close enough. I did my best. I'm sorry, Taika. If you're, you you're probably never gonna listen to this, but if you do, I'm I'm sorry. It's very awkward. Anyways, yeah, no, he. It's all right, Brian. <laughs> he's a, he's a comedic genius, um, as proven in his other works, and then even just here, he just brings such like a fun fun character to the screen. He's it's, it, that whole scene is like a very wholesome, like hey, twenty nineteen, you guys are playing this right? right. This guy's funny. Oh man, and yeah, the the shit talking the kid, always good. Um. Uh. Go for it. What's so, what did, we, what did you think? I guess just well, one. Did you have a problem with the rat letting Scott lay out of the quantum realm? No, it, it's very, it's very like appropriate to his character. Yeah, he, uh, he's just kind of like, unfortunately, not a punching bag. I'm but... Out of the quantum realm. I don't even view it as a as a cop. I don't even view it as like a cop out. It's kind of just like. And I also love that uh, Ken Jong would be in the security yeah. guard there. Also very funny. Yeah, I wish he had lines in this though. That's disappointing. His 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 looks right. are enough. Uh no, it's it was fine. I it, another thing that, that Paul Rudd, Scott Lang brought to this movie I thought was he kinda deliberately he was obviously the the main comedic guy, kinda him mm. and Thor and even Captain America was sometimes getting in on, mm. on the jokes. I, I still thought Ant Man kind of serving his purpose uh, other than being, you know, the big time right. travel guy. Uh, his, his, the, com- the comedy worked in this so well, too. Like, Paul, because Paul Rudd is just such a naturally just oh, hilarious guy. Oh, yeah, he's guy. incredibly talented. My God. Like, even the scene where he gets there and he's like, oh, who's sandwich mm-hmm. that? Like, I'm just like, ah, oh, Paul Rudd, you yeah. son of a bitch. Uh, so it was very, it was much needed and what otherwise would pretty much be a pretty dark mm-hmm. movie. Uh, no, so I mean, I'm fine with the rat thing, sure. Yeah, I think it gets a pass for me because Doctor Strange that says the only win in like one out of 14 million possible options, and you know what? A, a lot of those other ones probably don't end up with a rat hitting those particular buttons. We're seeing the one, yeah, yeah, that was the one. Like, what, what when Doctor Strange held up the one, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, that, that rat, yeah, <laughs> everything had to come together for them to pull this off and you know i think it's pretty dramatic that uh he he's dead they think that he's snapped away um and he's not and he goes and sees his daughter and she's much older now which must would for that character just be a mind fuck in its own on top of everything else that's happening in that moment yeah i mean it kind of it kind of plays along to the whole you know the the whole time difference and time jump and time travel thing really kind of changes the entire MCU going forward after this mm. movie too, it's because he now and I think in the comics too his daughter eventually becomes the Wasp or becomes like the female Ant Man. Oh God, what is she? Um, she is yeah, like the female Ant Man. She grows. God, what is her? 
I'll look it up real quick. This is really good podcasting. Dylan, you got to fill the air. You get it while I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that Trump, yeah, Oh, huh? oh. Uh, oh, okay. Um, maybe. No, so so obviously, you know, the, the time job, his daughter's not the cute little girl anymore. As we're trying to figure right now, she she, she plays some superhero in the future. So I think that, that this kind of helps set that up a little bit too for whenever Ant-Man 3 comes around, which I sure mm. hope it does because I loved Ant-Man 2, which we were off... We were, we were on our hiatus when Ant-Man 2 mm, came but out. But people so probably would have hated us for liking that, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, no, I mean, yeah, it, it really changes a lot of things. Obviously, we, like, Gamora's alive mm. now. So that kind of sets up what Guardians 3 is going to be. We have Peter Parker, which kind of I, – I texted you about it, too, and it's it's not my original thought. I, I saw mm. it online. I'll, I'll, I'll play it as my own, though. The whole thing about how if Peter Parker was snapped and it's been five years or all his friends just so you know, dumb. Just like college. Oh yeah, no, I was thinking they got held back. <laughs> oh, I mean they could be that Peter could be was that helping too, them I guess we'll the whole time. And without him, he yeah, just couldn't so I, do it. I guess we'll have to wait for Far From Home. <laughs> Obviously his friend Ned, which is, I guess is really the only friend mm-hmm. that matters, uh is seemed like he was snapped yeah. too. So I guess from like a nitpicky sense if they're all conveniently snapped, I guess it's oh, yeah. um, But realistically... Thanos just you know, hates uh, the academic team from that high school specifically. Yeah, yeah no, Midtown High mm. was fucked. After, yeah, he was like, sure. you know, I wanted I wanted to be unbiased, but also fuck that team from Spider-Man Homecoming particularly. Which we see, we see I think we see pretty much everyone that's mm-hmm. relevant that was in Homecoming that's also going to be right. far from home. So I think we need that. Like I said, a lot of his friends were conveniently snapped, which is kind of like it's a stupid thing to even talk about because I'm, it's not I'm, I'm not gonna go to Far From Home and be like, oh, yeah, it's like shit. you know what I'm people. gonna do with Far From Home. I'm going to see it and probably like it. That's all I care about. I'll probably see it exactly. two or three times. Yeah. Um, so uh, Scott Lang's daughter is part of the Young Avengers, and her superhero name is Stature. There we so, go. I never no, get Stature. No. Get Wasp, Ant Man, and Stature. Yes. <laughs> Oh man, it looks like her powers are generally like, um, gi- like giant man's powers, where she grows. Okay, well, these are spoilers for Ant Man wow. three. Just to spoil. Will she punch a space whale in the face though? Is the real question because that was a highlight of this film for me. Ant Man just punching one of the space whales right in its fucking face. I also kind of caught too, and I I don't know the whole lore behind this but i'm pretty sure that they were also i guess setting up potentially the bad guy in black panther 2 when they were talking about all those underwater mm, earthquakes going yeah. on submariner I, 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 and th- th- yeah i'm pretty sure mm. that was it and you're you're better th- with this than i am and so she says uh, uh black widow says to akoi you know how do we deal with this and akoi goes uh we deal with it by not dealing yeah. with it and so clearly it's something that Akoi knows about and, you know, maybe a potential villain for Black Panther mm-hmm. 2, which also I'm very, I mean, our very first podcast, shout out Brian Dillon, take mm-hmm. on the world, uh, was Black Panther. Yes. So it has a whole special place. In my oh heart, yeah. But I'm, I'm generally awesome. excited. For- <laughs> yeah. Um, I think too, um, something that I was wondering after, and I saw it, uh, really late, like 11. So it was about two o'clock. By the time I was out of there. So the Sorcerer Supreme, she mm-hmm. says that when you remove an Infinity Stone from a timeline, it starts to like kind of destabilize the timeline. Are all the crazy mm-hmm. things they're talking about happening all over the universe part because Thanos removed all six Infinity Stones from their timeline? Do you think? I mean, it's, I guess it's a valid question. Um, one one of the things that kind of stands out to me when we're thinking about you, you know the stones being removed is when they're back in mm. New York, and when Loki rips oh, out God, of there that's with so great with the space yeah. stone. Um, at a and this is not my original thought either. Uh, shout out to my friend Brian Wong who brought mm. this up to me, and Brian Wong, Brian Wong, I hope you subscribed and resubscribed yeah. because and let me know. just say, great name. Oh, Brian Wong, yeah. I accidentally texted him the video of our opener for this. <laughs> he was like, so I demanded he deleted it and deleted this conversation so there was no yes. spoilers for his yeah. pod. Uh, he brought up how that basically sets up the whole Loki TV show. Oh, yes, show, definitely. Which I thought was a great point because now Loki's back in like an alternate mm-hmm. universe, not dead, 
and he has the space stone and he also has he who knows where he's going but that, that i mean that could be one thing that that mm-hmm. stone is no longer yeah, there he could do he could open a restaurant we don't know we don't know what the show's going to be about loki kills jfk mm-hmm. i'm calling he that good <laughs> oh god all right so <laughs> Anyways, uh, where are we going? Yeah, so we get, you know, like this really heartfelt scene where Tony is conflicted about potentially changing the past because everyone lost so much except for Tony. He actually, like, gained stuff after the snap. Yeah, I mean, and I, I totally get it, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, being a dad, being a dad, shout out all the dads out there. Um, I, I have a dad. Brian, I think I you do, have a dad, yes. too. Um, so shout out all the dads. If you're not a dad, what are you doing? Um, yeah, no, I mean, so I kind of get it. I mean, Tony's kind of like, Hey, like I'm, I'm finally like at peace. Well, I don't know if necessarily at peace is the right word, but you know, I, I, I got a family. I'm kind of chilling on this lake in this cabin over here. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I guess I get it. Cause like Tony's kind of like, ah, I don't really see a way we're going to be able to reverse this. So I'm not going to go try to risk my life. Yeah. He has so much family. to lose like, everything. Like he went from, in the first Iron Man, having nothing to lose, you know, just himself, to having, like, so much, and still putting the weight of the world on his shoulders and doing the greater good. That's why, I mean, now that we've talked about how Tony dies, I mean, this this was such a great goodbye mm-hmm. to Iron Man slash Tony Stark. I mean, you kind of covered all angles. He has a family now. The the, the, the famous, you know, proof Tony Stark mm-hmm. has a heart. That 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 whole thing, you know, he, he's finally with Pepper. He's married. He has a, he has a daughter. Um, and you also kind of get some closure on another end too when he goes back in the 1970 and he, oh, he sees yeah, his dad. That's great. Uh, shout out, shout out mm. all the dads. Um, yeah. And so I thought, I thought that whole scene was great too. It was kind of like, you know, t- I, you always got the sense that Tony kind of hated mm. his father. And then in civil war, you found out that he was murdered by the mm. winter soldier. So he never really got the closure. And it was, it was just, that whole scene was really nice. You know, they're talking about. He's talking to Tony about how his mother is pregnant yeah. with Tony. And I guess they <laughs> I guess they have just officially like gotten rid of the young Howard Stark actor. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. The the guy I don't remember yeah, that guy. First in. Avenger yeah, that, and then in uh that was the T V show. Um yep. Agents of not Agents of Shield, uh Peggy Carter. Right? Yep. Is that the name of it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I, uh, this guy, I think this is the guy from, from mm-hmm. Mad Men. Um, he was also in Civil War. Yeah, he's, so he's great, dude. obviously. Like, he's a very good actor. It's just funny that they were like, eh, we'll just it, DH him. It, it's funny you brought that up because I, I couldn't tell it. I couldn't tell if I was misremembering who the who Howard Stark was in Captain America: The First mm-hmm. Avenger. No, I thought that whole, whole all the flashbacks I liked a lot. Uh, we go back to the god awful Thor: The Dark World movie, and with four and rocket in this and it actually it was it was great um natalie portman who is a well-known mcu mm-hmm. hater uh, unless it benefits her uh <laughs> it was kind of cool kind of cool to see her in this uh the whole rocket trying to chase her down and stab her <clears throat> in the ass with the thing that wasn't on screen i'm yeah. just assuming that's what happened. yeah i mean we, uh, we missed something there uh who knows uh, but the other the other flashback too when they, when they go to morag i think that's mm-hmm. what it's called and they see peter quill <laughs> And he's oh dancing God. like he did, yeah. and, and the song's playing like he did in the movie. Then it cuts to him just singing without any music. I thought that oh, was that, that was scenes. something that people with a bigger brain than I can only think of that. Like I thought that was hilarious. It was oh, so it funny. Was so good. And, and War Machine turns and everybody's like, "Oh, so he's an idiot." It was like, just completely straight face, like kind of pissed off, looking down. Just yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like it, it's like it's it's perfect. Oh, it's, it's, it's so, so amazing. Uh, <laughs> There were a lot of shots at Peter. Well, I guess well deserved. Um, another another flashback. I guess they were just on the flashback. Yeah, why not? Or the the the, the uh, Hulk mm. with, with the mm. stairs. That was great. Hilarious. So so, so many funny. stairs. No oh, stairs. <laughs> and the whole point with with him trying to get on the elevator too, and they're like, oh, yeah. it just it's what what humor? What humor? Bro? Yeah, and we get to see Robert Redford back. Um, we got to see Crossbones yep. back, who I thought was a huge missed opportunity to have like a cool villain. Uh, sure. I like Crossbones, and they did him dirty by just killing him immediately in Civil War, in my opinion. One of the uh, 
one of the best scenes in the movie to me. Um, you think you're going to get a whole other mm-hmm. elevator fight scene like we did in Winter Soldier, and you get a Captain America bends over and says, Hail Hydra. That was yeah, so good. And, uh, what a way to take, because that was a really controversial thing just from like a year or two ago, right? Um, oh. And what a way to kind of take that and make it, I'm, I'm going to say, going to be an iconic like moment where it shows the evolution of Cap where he was a brawler and now, you know, he's using his mind to smart people. That was, yeah, one of the big things with this movie, too, is you kind of see Cap come full circle, where he's no longer, like you said, the bruiser, the guy that's getting in the, in the mud fighting, you know, he's he's using his head. And, like, the Hail Hydra thing was very clear yeah. with that, too. And it, just the looks of the faces were so great. Just, wait, what? <laughs> Captain America is one of us? And just So, so Brian, I guess I kind of I, I wrote down some pros, too, but I guess I want to ask, other than the battle scene we talked about at the end, what was uh, what was probably your favorite scene? Um, okay, so my favorite scene, actually this is perfect because we were just talking about it, when Cap fights himself. Um, <laughs> well, you know, the lead up to that would being like, oh man, I forgot how like little justice that does your ass like Cap. And then uh, Scott being like, ah, don't listen to him. That's America's ass. That's <laughs> like such ass. a great thing uh, for him to say. First of all, hilarious, and then there there is there is a lot of one liners in this movie mm-hmm. like that, like hail, hail Hydra, that's America's yeah. ass, um, shit like that. Yeah, it was so funny. But so, just like so their good. fight, and they're like going back and forth, and the 2012 version of Cap is like, I didn't do this all day, and he's just like, Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, ah, oh, that's so good. And then after he defeats him, going like, Oh, that is America's ass. Checking out his own ass, just so good. Uh, I I think for me, I mean, not really one scene. Any scene with like Fat Thor, <laughs> I was all for it. Um, it was like he was really like he was the Avenger version of like Fat yep. Mac. Yeah, yep, always sunny exactly. Philadelphia. Like Fat Mac just set up just a whole thing of like he's fat, so like he's gonna do he's gonna do mm-hmm. fat things, and it was just it's a humor that that makes mm-hmm. me laugh whether it's childish or not. No, no, I mean pretty much everything with Thor. Pretty much when he with Korg too playing yeah. Fallout. I mean, yeah, great. and uh, I like too how Thor is always like the most cocksure, cocky guy, and this he's a complete mess. <laughs> yeah, no, he's yeah, uh, he's like, you know, he's questionable. He's he's a sketchy guy now. He's you don't know where we don't know what he's it's doing. It's like okay, let's do this, and a second later, I can't do this. <laughs> I have to go. Just. Um, the when they walk when they walk into there go with the ums again, Brian. We're gonna get some some comments in in the in the sub about that well, too. Well, it it happens. So when they first walk into Thor's house and he like he like they're calling out Thor, they don't see him. All of a sudden, he just mm. walks by, and you can see that he's a disheveled mess. It's like, oh, you hear you hear about yeah. the cable? And like it's just, it, one line, it's like that. It just it, it makes me laugh out loud mm. each time I see it. It's and and it, like I said, a movie that's as serious as this, um, that's kind of as heartbreaking mm. as this, like. The comedy in this was just worked so well. Yeah, I think um, speaking of serious and heartbreaking, that first scene of the film. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, I mean, we put it off for too... almost an hour, but I think we gotta we gotta take it head on because that was dark. I mean, we kind of get to with, with, with Hawkeye related mm-hmm. to so obviously we get the opening scene with his family, which I think like you knew what yeah. was going on when when you when you saw that. Uh, still tough, you know. Shout out to all mm-hmm. the dads. Uh, being a dad myself, you know, the, the, that's a tough watch. Tough, tough to see your family dusted mm. away. Yeah, you, you hate to see it happen. And then, you know. Uh, and then the other one, obviously, and we haven't talked about it, which is was another shocking one to me too, is, is Black Widow. Yeah, man, she uh, has her own movie coming. What? Yeah, um, I didn't. I, I really didn't see that coming. I mean, I guess the how else would they get the Soul Stone? But I, I just. I thought that whole scene was great too. They're both, it kind of parallels Thanos just straight up killing his daughter mm-hmm. willingly. Well, willingly for Thanos, unwillingly yeah. for her. And then both of them, Black Widow and Hawkeye, fighting to try to save yeah. the other person slash kill themselves so they, they can accomplish their mission. Uh, it was just, it was great. Uh, I mean, and they were kind of like, they were fucking each other <laughs> up know, too. Um, Hawkeye shot an explosive arrow at her <laughs> at one point. It was, it was pretty like rough and tumble there but you know and i guess by him letting her go that's like 
the actual sacrifice. You know, yeah. Like, I don't know if it would have worked if they would just jumped off. That, I don't that know. Been that would have been awkward. <laughs> that movie would have turned out yeah. super dark real well. <laughs> the, the red skull just floats away and like, well, you didn't sacrifice them, so. Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we're gonna see Black Widow again on yeah. the big screen, but I mean, Scarlett Johansson, she's she's well, like an original Avenger. Oh yeah, she is an original Avenger for sure. Uh, it it didn't hit me as hard as Tony, but it still hit. I mean, that was yeah. Uh, whatever it takes, mm. whatever it takes, Brian. Yeah, and uh, I I still wonder if perhaps her being in the Soul Stone, you know, same with Gamora, if that means they'll come back, or if we've solved that by introducing a past version of Gamora. Um, mm. you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens, but really sad. Although I'm a little frustrated because I was like, I always thought like, oh, they're not going to put Punisher in the movies because his story is too dark. And then uh, Ronan just has the same or very similar story to the Punisher. Something something I was hoping for in the very end was that we were going to maybe get a Deadpool at some point. Deadpool, oh, that would have been and a just, lot. Like, so, something that they filmed last minute after acquiring mm. Fox, like him just like, him nonchalantly just somewhere, just being very Deadpool-ish. Oh, man. Maybe the director's maybe, cut. Maybe. I, um, you know, once again, we don't see any of the street heroes from Netflix, but, you know, since the last time we talked, their, all their shows have been wiped off the face of the earth. Snapped away. Yeah, and so that's unfortunate. But uh, I guess the dream can die now. Well, I, this is what happens when you go off air. All yeah, goes down. We're not, it's like... We're moving an Infinity Stone from the world. We're moving this podcast from the world, and stuff starts starts going bad in the entertainment world, anyways. But yeah, so I guess we'll never see uh, Matt Murdock or um, the Punisher, or Jessica Jones, or Luke Cage, or any of them in these movies. But I want to. Yeah, I guess it is what it is. I guess, I guess not. Uh, it's bullshit, Ryan. It's bro. It's bullshit. I, I it definitely feel like I spent a lot of time watching this, thinking it was going to pay off, and I. Uh, it did the, not. Big, the big pockets of the mouse just ruined mm, it all. It's true. I'm just <laughs> yes, please don't come for us. If you want to buy up, our podcast for a, a billion, you can, you have it. I mean, you have that money. I don't know. Like I don't, know, I don't know why you do. I'll, I'll sell it to you for twenty dollars. Right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll we'll renegotiate the price, but just know we are open for business to be part of the MCU. Here, Brian and Dylan take on the world. All right, so I guess I guess let's let's hit him with uh, I don't know what's kind of like your your ending thoughts on on Endgame. I mean, and this is quite literally the Endgame. You know, this is this is it for the Infinity Saga. Yeah, I think um, smart that the next movie they have coming out is Spider Man because everyone just loves Spider Man, and it'll get us back into it. Because I was you know I was debating with myself like, is this the end for me as watching the movies? Or at least being as invested in them. I don't think it is. I think, you know, I'm here for the long haul. There's always that, like, fear where you have with anything. Where it's like, man, is this going to get bad one day? Am I going to am I gonna watch this like I've watched The Walking Dead for years? And I've, just, like, watch it go off the cliff? Or is this going to stay consistently good forever? You just never know. I've always kind of had the thought that superhero movies in general are going to kind of be like what the Western genre was to kind of like the baby right. boomers. And you talk to, you know, you talk to your grandpa, shout out all the mm. grandpas, uh, how they, they, they all have their favorite Western. They all love Westerns. And there's like, there's now an entire channel dedicated to right, Westerns. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I have a feeling that that's what superhero movies is going to mm. be for us in like 30, 40 years. Uh, I, I don't, really see it slowing down anytime soon because even speak of shazam shazam is such a, like a ridiculous character but i i actually love the shazam mm -hmm. movie so yeah i mean unfortunately you you have you have the other big big ip in dc with superman and batman who like can't get their <laughs> shit together so yeah spad something like that where like if you have you have two of the most popular superheroes mm. out there and you can't get that right, I think that that's eventually what could be the downfall of the superhero genre and superhero right. movies. But I mean the MCU deserves literally all the praise mm. in the world. They they've done everything correctly. 
Like, literally everything correctly. Yeah, and I think even to, like, piggyback on the DC point, it's like Aquaman came out, and that was a huge success. Huge. Loved Aquaman, yep. And uh, Endgame just made more than it its entire run in the opening weekend. So, shit. That's, that's like, nothing could spell out the dis- disparity between the two, you know, big superhero companies right now. And it's, uh, I guess we'll see. I mean, that's kind of a talk for yeah. a different day, but we don't even know who Superman is. We don't know who Batman is. And then a Batman movie comes out in a year oh or two God. years. I don't even yeah. know anymore. I don't even know. I think, I think it's 2021. Um, I don't know. I never thought I would say I'm out on Batman and mm-hmm. Superman, um, but I guess we'll see. But the MCU, like I said, Black Panther 2, Sp- uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, Guardi- as Guardians of the mm-hmm. Galaxy. Whatever Captain Marvel two, presumably is. Uh, a Doctor all Strange, in. a Black Widow movie, like I'm, I'm all in for for mm. all those movies. Where I can't really say the same for DC, but Aquaman and Shazam, you know, two thumbs up for me. I mm. love both movies. And hey, maybe we'll get a Captain America with Sam as Captain America. I, so I, I guess that's that's the ne- the next TV show is uh, is Sam Wilson and oh, Bucky Barnes. Really? That's awesome. Disney Plus, yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah, like stuff like that. I'm still I'm so mm-hmm. in for. I guess I guess the question too is is when when do you have when do you, when is too much mm-hmm. too much? Uh, I but it um, not yeah. yet. Not I me. think you can do it well. I think you can do it creatively. Like I just watched the Umbrella Academy, um, which is a superhero show, but it's very different from a lot of the other superhero stuff out there, and it's worth watching. So I think creative people telling different stories is always gonna work whether it's with a you know overlaying of fantasy or a western or a superhero now it's just like another genre to tell interesting and creative stories in which i think the the big point too is that and you just saw it with with endgame is that when you have something that that's that's down down to the the very the very very dna of all these Mm -hmm. movies like every everything's laid out, every everything is planned, and we saw how well that worked with the M- with the MCU. I mean, the, we're 22 movies right. in, and the movie that just came out, like I just, I think I said earlier, it's my all time favorite superhero mm-hmm. movie, and I haven't said that yet. It's my all time favorite superhero movie. I'm pretty sure I did though. Uh, it's, you know, they're pretty, they're staying mm-hmm. hot right now. It, more so for the MCU than than uh, DC. I, I, I really don't see them messing mm-hmm. it up, but I guess, you know, I guess we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. So is there anything else you want to cover before we sign off of this first episode back? Oh, dude, rip, rip, rip to your edit. So, so I know. it'll be fun. So uh, I will say for everyone, I'm sure this episode's going to be very well edited together. Poor Brian. We have had so many technical difficulties for this. So, Brian, shout out to you. Hey, you it's... know, I'm, I'm putting you up dads and the grandpas <laughs> you know it's uh it was a big goal to be considered up there um no hey you know i i've had worse technical difficulties with podcasts in the in the past one day i'll count up all the ones i've like all the podcasts i've done so i can say of the 200 podcasts i've recorded this isn't the worst it, i'm not i'm not even worried about this one perfect um yeah so scores for the movie um do you want to go first yes, i am giving this a 92 out of 100. Oh, baby. Now, well, I'm trying to be, I want like, I want to be like the stern critic, but I also really liked this movie a lot. So, um, uh, shout out to more. Everyone needs more. I'm, uh, giving it a 99, 99, 99 out of a hundred. Yeah. So, I mean, you pretty much can't, can't there's, get better than that. No, to me, there's no such thing as a perfect mm-hmm. movie. So I don't think there'll ever be a hundred mm-hmm. out of a hundred. Uh, but the only other, like, I only think I only have probably like two other 99s and I never really thought about it right now, but it's probably uh, Inception mm-hmm. is my other 99 and like Goodfellas. Okay. Hey, those are two pretty good those, movies. The, this is, like I said, this is my all-time favorite superhero movie. This is probably one of my top 10 all-time favorite movies. I, I love this movie. This is, I, like I said, I, I was blown away with how good it was. It did. It, it exceeded my expectations. I generally cannot wait to watch for a third time. Yeah. And a fourth time. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it soon, um, a couple days from now for the second time with a friend who has been too busy to go see it yet. So I'm really excited to go check it out for a second time and hopefully actually be 
more awake than I was at one in the morning while watching the final battle scene. Well, at least you didn't have your projector go out like my oh, theory did. That's the worst. Yeah. thought I was going to witness a nerd murder. That could have been a riot real quick. <laughs> An opening night. Uh, I, settled the, I settled the people, though. I, I stood up and I said, listen, Brian and Dylan take on the world. They're mm-hmm. coming back. And there was cheers. Yeah. I thought I thought I thought they were going to It was a great unifier for sure. It's not surprising, honestly, like once people hear that it's back like they're just going to flock to it. Um I think ironically, uh my my favorite superhero movie before this is X-Men Days of Future Past for a lot of the same reasons. Um you know, I I thought it was like a real culmination of that universe. I honestly didn't think they need to make any mm-hmm. more X-Men movies other than Logan after that one if we're being fair. Um and it also had to do with time travel and like the end of the world and all that stuff. And I thought, you know, this is probably my favorite superhero movie as well. I, I don't know what could top it. And it it adds in like the years and years that we've been watching only adds to it. You know, it's like the longest, most expensive running TV show for the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, I mean, what 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 like a, a a couple weeks for us? We have Game of Thrones, Avengers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, we have Spider Man coming up in in two months. You know, we're sitting pretty. Buddy. I mean, we we survived Avengers and the Battle of Winterfell in the same weekend, so we can do anything. Um, yeah. No spoilers so guess, on uh, that. Maybe another time. Maybe when we wrap up the whole season on another podcast. So I guess uh, what's what's next for the pod, buddy? Where we go? Where do we go from here? Um, well, like I said, I would definitely love to talk about Game of Thrones after it's over in a few weeks, and um, I think something that'd be cool is us getting more involved with having guests on, talking about their podcast, their creative endeavors, and of course, watching fun movies and talking about them and trying to be you know consistent. You know what I mean? Well, count count me in. Uh, count me in for Game of Thrones. Uh, I'd love nothing more than Game of awesome. Thrones. Um, I will say we we do have a little blog that we're very inconsistently, consistently trying to do. Brian has been keeping up with it a lot more than I have. I I have I have one very big Oscars blog. Yes, that was fun. You know, if if you didn't if you recorded the Oscars and you're waiting mm. to watch it, you know, check out our blog. You somehow remained unspoiled. Uh, at, at wickedgoodeverything.com yes. that's my that's my one shout out um hopefully uh, my, my goal is to start writing there a little yes, bit more awesome. uh, i have i have the amc movie pass so i see on average like a movie a week so i should really be uh writing a little bit mm-hmm. more there um no i mean you know we have a lot of dedicated fans who've been writing us letters in the mail and we appreciate mm-hmm. that shout out shout out to all those the, all the people that wrote letters in the mail and the dads and the, and the grandpas. Yeah, and especially the dad, or especially the grandfathers who wrote letters, because they're also dads, if you think about it, because they would have had to be and to I become also, a grandfather. I also want to give one more shout out to Brian Wong, who I know subscribe, resubscribe to the podcast. <laughs> I like that he Brian unsubscribed. He's like, oh, God, episode. they're not putting in any more episodes. I'm going to unsubscribe to this. Quite literally, the conversation we had at work, uh, we, you know, really hit me in the plums when he said, "Hey, I had to unsubscribe. It was taking up my my, my oh, feed." Oh, uh, well, we're back, Brian. We're back, Brian Wong, <laughs> baby. We're back. We're just gonna tweet this at him the second it goes live. And uh, I don't know if he yeah, has so I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I've never had the had the pleasure of meeting a fellow Brian named Brian Wong. Probably for the best. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, uh, who knows where we go next, Brian? All, all I know is, is we're back. We're like Tiger mm-hmm. Woods. We're like we're like that song where they scream, "We're we're back, we're yeah, back." Yeah, I mean, baby. Tiger Woods won a Masters this year, right? I don't I don't know He's much back. about golf, but I think that happened. But Tiger is back. Yeah, so I mean, if Tiger was coming back, there's no way that we couldn't come back. So, I'm good. I'm good, buddy. This this was this was fun. Uh, rip to all the edits you have to do. Uh, hopefully this this comes together pretty nicely, but uh, you know you're a sweetheart. Thanks thanks for doing all the work. Hey man, you do. It, it's awesome. I'm so glad that we're back to doing this, guys. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes if you're only watching this on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube if you're only listening to this on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at WG Everything on Instagram at Wicked Good Everything. Check out all our streams, all our sketches, 
the Overwatch League report if, you, if you're into Overwatch. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you guys again real soon. Subscribe to YouTube, or I will yeah. find you. I will we're, find we're you. Almost you subscribe we're almost closer to 800 than 700 subs now, so. So help me God, if we're not at 800 when this pod drops, I will yeah. find you. I will find you, Brian oh, Vaughn. He, Brian, he knows where you live, Brian. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Good night. Love you guys.